guys welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be working on how to avoid duplicates coming from a post request in ASP.NET Core this is just one of the ways that you can do it so I'm going to specify that this is going to be a post request I'm going to have a public async task action result this is going to be my model which is a product model class let me just open the class so this properties basically represent product name category and description from this database so you're gonna notice that there's one duplicate here which is the notebook we're going to block another um, duplicate so if someone's going to post another pencil or another uh, printer they're not gonna be able to do that okay so let's just go back to the API I'm gonna go to my controller and uh, what I'm gonna have here is I'm going to append the property that I need so in this case I'm passing my product which is my model class as product and then I'm going to access my product name why? Because that's uh, what I want to avoid. I want to avoid duplicates with the names. So when I already have this uh, variable, I can actually start creating a link query in order to count how many of those names could be a duplicate. So uh, the code here is very simple. So you're going to have a from D in my context, which I already created, and then I call my uh, product class, and I specify the condition here. So, where my product name it's going to be equal to my input. So this input has to be one or less than one. Otherwise, we have to block that post request. That's basically the whole idea of this okay and then whenever I have these uh, two variables I'm going to actually implement a condition and condition that blocks that so I'm going to say if this duplicate count this is one of the methods on that net it's higher or equal than one then I'm going to create a warning message and then I'm going to throw a new invalid operation exception so let's just change this message this product is already in the database okay so this is a better message perfect so what I'm gonna have here is if this condition is met then I'm going to throw this new exception I'm gonna pass a message which is warning here otherwise if it's a new product with a name that we do not have in the database then we're going to add the product we're going to await the context save the changes and we can check that on the database later so what I'm gonna do now it's I'm going to test this because it's a post request I'm gonna do it in Postman so let me just uh, run this application I'm gonna go to Postman I already have something here which is pencil and if you notice we already have one pencil here so if I try to post another pencil uh basically that net should block that request let's try to do it so i'm going to uh specify that is a post request i'm going to send this but before doing that i forgot to uh just try to make sure what's going on here so i'm going to set a few breakpoints here just to 
show you guys what's going on basically. Okay, so I'm gonna run this again. Okay. And then I'm going to try to post this. So I'm gonna send this right now. So basically now I'm going to press F10 or the step over button, which is on top. And I'm going to see what's going on. So uh, here we can see that this query gets a number one. So it counts this product name as one. So there's already one product, which we already know. It's right here. There's a pencil here. So we got to block that, right? So because the condition is higher or equal than one, this should throw me the exception. So let's just keep going, step over or F10. And then if you notice here, let me just move this a little bit. You'll see that if I do it again here, F10, I'll see that the warning message, this product is already in the database. It's thrown. That's it. So if I keep going, uh, the program basically it's going to stop here because it's throwing the exception. So let's see. You'll see the exception here. This product is already in the database not allowed. So I'm going to try to do the same, but with a different product. So let me just stop the application. And we're going to send a new product. So let me just run the application again. And I'm going to send a, let's say, iPad. So I'm going to have an iPad. This is going to be a, I am an iPad. And here in the price, I'm going to have $1,000. And I'm going to leave this category as school items. That's okay. So I'm going to send this request now. But before that, let's see if we have some iPad here. So we don't have iPads here. Okay, so I only have these A records for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this and I'm going to basically run the same process. So the input is an iPad and you will see that if I step over again, I'll see that my duplicate variable is zero. So that means that there's no duplicates. And I can keep going and no exception is thrown. So I'm going to go to the else uh, condition and then it should just get saved asynchronous in the database. So let's return the product and let's see if it worked. So if I come here, to my database, I just refresh this, I execute this, I'll see that my iPad is here. So because there's uh because an iPad is not a duplicate, we can actually post it. Okay, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys like the video. I mean, there's different ways to do this. You can probably do a try and cache. You could also encapsulate this in a uh, if model uh, state is valid and then put this code inside. So you could do multiple things with this, but the idea of this video was to show you how to catch uh, those duplicates. So I hope you guys like the video and I'll see you in our next video.